the bank loans and sure. that's why government in fact has launched a program called financial inclusiveness so if at all you want to first of all address it then can it be not also include the private money lenders who actually in fact pressurize the farmers blackmail them threaten them which forces the farmers to commit suicide finally of course you have to and i think that has been recognized in the initial euphoria and the initial hysteria also of the uh, debt waiver Uh, these things were raised i have no doubt that correctives will be brought i mean the parliamentary standing committees will sit down debate the uh, budget in the recess two things that have come up one is the private money lender uh, the other is the ceiling Sector on the holding. on the land holding that barani areas will have to get higher land uh, holdings as uh, um, admissible for relief those two things will undoubtedly happen and it's not as though it's not possible i mean kerala has got this farmer debt relief commission yeah. so take a cue from that in any case you can press the money lenders very easily because they are charging usurious interest rates which are illegal carrot and stick approach do a negotiation acha if you paid this much you paid the principal you can negotiate you can do the the carrot and you can do the stick state wise bring the district uh, administration agriculture universities agriculture departments ngos bring all of these people together but i would advocate one thing that should be instituted straight away and that is an oversight mechanism for monitoring a kind of citizen sentinel to see where this money is going yeah. because this money i can almost see people rubbing their hands in glee and saying ah 60000 crores we must make sure that it does not go to e- the people for whom it is not intended the fat cat farmers those but, who are growing so with some uh, checks and balances but you really welcome that debt waiver is something which was required oh, absolutely. and had has been done but absolutely. it needs something more but debt waiver as a concept is something which was called for and it should not become an another boon an opportunity for those who wait for floods to come because there is a flood economy in india Correct. the floods always help people to yes. make uh, whatever they really yeah. required to yeah. do for the rest of so that's point you I said think- sorry but i think that one thing that should be done uh, this uh, oversight and monitoring is a very important yeah. mechanism and all states whenever these kinds of loans are being written off by banks banks must publish these details in local newspapers yeah. and national dailies so really uh, ramdeen gangadeen yeah. this much land this much land this yeah. is the li- waiver let this be transparency is a great oversight yeah, absolutely i think uh, information is something which will really help yes. people to empower and let them know yeah. for example uh, what the reconciliation between total amount return off and the beneficiaries and then qualification for those beneficiaries and whether it has really been done or not yeah that's have the real people got the relief right, absolutely yeah. now you know still you said that uh, debt waiver is only a uh, probably only a partial response to the farm crisis right. the agrarian crisis right. so we need to do much more right. because finally otherwise uh, we have five year plan in which we try to talk about development for five years if you don't have adequate measures to revitalize agriculture then maybe we have every 3 year a debt waiver plan so if that not to happen then what are the measures you think we should really take on a long term basis to make agriculture the farm sector a really viable enterprise i think you put your finger absolutely on the problem how to prevent the repeat of the debt trap because this is a one time thing and it should be only a one time thing let this waiver make the farmer credit worthy again actually that's what it's going to do yeah. so it should be the right kind of farmer who becomes credit worthy again now the government has floated lots of schemes the rashtriya krishi vikas yojana the national food security mission the national horticulture mission the bharat nirman there is a lot of money floating around in the name of agriculture and rural development what needs to be done is to link the credit worthy farmer the one who has been provided relief to the scheme to make sure that it does not go into unprofitable activities number 1 number 2 there's no getting past one thing that is if you don't make farming remunerative if you don't increase the price of agriculture produce you can do debt waivers every weekend the debt trap will remain because it's an adverse economics the national commission on uh, farmers has made a recommendation that minimum support price should be c2 plus 50% C2 means the total input cost includes family labor includes everything because if i am investing my time in the field then i am deprived of daily wages that i could have earned somewhere so when you're saying it's not just seed fertilizer pesticide and water that you should calculate as input cost you should calculate the time of the family the number of man days that have been invested in the crop 
that is the C2. Like in manufacturing, Absolutely. the managing director of the company can put his salary. Correct. And then because he's putting in time, why not farmers? So, Absolutely. So that plus 50%. Plus 50%. Because if you don't have uh, at least 50% over the input cost, how can it be viable? Right. And keeping in mind that farming is the most risky enterprise in the world, weather dependent. Yeah. So if you don't give them support like that, so one thing I think very clear, everybody understands, the market price for agriculture farm produce must be high enough to make farming attractive to farmers. The other thing is technology and service inputs. And by technology, I do not mean genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is probably pouring oil onto a fire that is raging already. That's the last thing we need. We have a huge genetic diversity in this country. When people say that we are facing climate change, we need to get climate, we need to get adapted varieties, look at your genetic diversity. You know, Gene Campaign is putting up seed banks and gene banks in Jharkhand and in Uttaranchal. Today, agricultural research institutions, the Indian Agricultural Research Institution and the Birsa Agricultural University is using our material, our meaning, material meaning, the material of the farming community that we have collected in gene banks to study drought tolerance because that material is there. You don't need genetic engineering. So technology which is appropriate and supportive of the farmer and service. There is no extension service. So when the farmer has a problem, doesn't know where to go, how to support the, himself in a time of crisis. You know, these things are all known, Mr. Prabhu. Yeah. It's not so as though we don't know the we solutions. Need to put it into place. We need to have now, a political one will. One issue, you know, which is, in fact, nobody can dispute that fact that uh, we need to provide remunerative prices to farmers. Mm -hmm. And you actually said what the Farmers mm -hmm. Commission has said earlier, how to actually make that remunerative price work. But if you do that, for example, then the food prices will shoot up by maybe 70, 80 percent, maybe 100 percent, even more. How do we then tackle the security for the millions of people? Because the livelihood security, food is the livelihood security. How do you provide that? I think that this is also very well understood that the, the PDS should be universalized. I mean, affordable food and remunerative prices for the farmers can very well go together. And they can go together if you put a kind of program in place that the public distribution system is made into a universal PDS, not this BPL, APL, Tamasha that's going on right now. And that you are able to keep food costs low because uh, the immediately some argument will come up that, you know, subsidy in the WTO, etc. Take lessons from the green box politics of Europe. I mean, why don't we see what they are doing and take lessons from that ourselves? Put in fallow land, environmental conservation, farming as a multi-sectoral activity, rural livelihoods, etc. You can continue to subsidize the food of this country by a universal PDS by using all the mechanisms that are being used in the agreement on agriculture by Europe. There is going to be nothing that is going to be non-compliant, but you have to use it intelligently. Yeah. Now if you say where will this come from, where will that come from? The, the, you, you tell me that the economy is booming at 9 percent, there is money. You just have to have political will to put the money in the right place education, health and food. Once these things are taken care of by the state through mechanisms like what I was just suggesting, a universal PDS, which makes food grains available to those kind of people for whom food price is an issue. It's not an issue for everybody. But that sector of India that still has to, and that does not mean people who we call people below the poverty line today, but maybe people, many people in the middle class, the lower middle class, would want to have access to cheaper food, make food grains available. And then you have covered both. You have covered remunerative farm costs for the farmer and you have made sure that you have affordable uh, food price for the people who need support for uh, food. Yeah, You talked about uh, another key input that is required is appropriate technology. Now, you know, in fact, uh, there are already half of the farmers want to leave farming and want to do something else. So there will be fewer number of people, willing farmers, mm -hmm. who like to do farming. And then, as we already s talked about that probably we need lesser land because some land will have to be kept for forest, some land will have to be kept for a growing population. So on a short, smaller land, we need more production. So productivity mm -hmm. has to be increased. So technology will be absolutely essential to do that. Do you think biotechnology in an appropriate form can, could be the answer to this? I don't rule out biotechnology as a technology that could one day deliver. 
but it has got nothing to offer us today. And that is the problem. We need to recognize what the technology can do and what the technology cannot do. Today, the four main crops are cotton, corn, canola, soya, nothing related to, to food security. And there are no crops that have been bred for high yield. The two principal genetically engineered crops are the Bt crops for pest resistance and the herbicide tolerant crops for creating uh, a situation where weeding is not necessary, that you kill off the weeds chemically. These are not suited for us. I mean, for us, weeding is an economic exercise. If you have herbicide tolerant crops, all the women who go there to weed during the season and for which they get wages, they will be out of daily wages. So, what you are really saying is uh, biotechnology per se is not wrong, nothing wrong with that. What we really need to use is the right biotechnology for the right purpose and for the right cause in the right context. That with sufficient is. testing. We do not have appropriate testing. And I think today the genetically engineered not food... Not blindly, are, but use it in a... They're dangerous today. You have to test better. You have to have better systems. So, why? how do you put that in place? Because, you know, actually we need technology, as you said, appropriate one. Biotechnology could be an answer, but with proper precaution, with all the checks and balances in place. Do you think uh, we, can, we could think about a new law, like you've a campaign for a law farmers on farmers' rights. rights. Yeah, yeah. Could you think about something like this Absolutely. to address this problem? Absolutely. I think a new law is necessary that p places a lot of emphasis on biosafety. Yeah. That is the crux of this technology. Right. It can create very dangerous products. Yeah. I mean, the science will tell you yeah. why it will create. Not a monster. We don't want to create a monster. Crea c correct. The other thing is relevance. If you remember, you came to our 2003 national conference on the relevance of GM technology. Yes, to Indian agriculture and even at that time and I don't think it's changed very much today there was a question mark on the relevance because yes. our agricultural problems are very different what biotechnology is offering us today are very different there seems to be no match but that doesn't mean it cannot do something in future that's it I mean that's something which uh, probably there's a lot of misunderstanding and misconception about uh, so what you're really saying the gene campaign stands for biotechnology they are not opposed to it but it stands for they oppose it what is available today. Absolutely. They oppose the misuse of it, yes. the abuse of it, but not the appropriate use of it. That's Any really technology want. can be made to That's serve right. the public good. Yeah. In fact, Dr. Radha Krishnan, one of our former president, had once said that it's, uh, technology is like a fire. You know, you can cook food with it or you can destroy a house, a house with this. Correct. So I think we need an appropriate technology. Thank you very much for talking Thank to you. us. This was Dr. Suman Sai talking to us about various issues related to how we can make our farmers secure our household safe in terms of having food, at the same time secure a better future for us. Thank you very much for talking to us. We look forward to your ideas coming into action very soon. And I really, on this optimistic note of that happening, I bid thank you and bid you farewell. To all my viewers who really participated in this program, this was Top Shot in which we are talking to Dr. Suman Sai. Please come back again next week in which we will talk to you about another issue with another personality of an of an issue which concerns you and me. I look forward to meeting you again. Good night. Bye-bye.